Welcome to Social We Media, straight talk about social multimedia. Today, I'm really excited because I have Martha Giffen. And what I love about her is she is really spunky like me. And I love having spunky guests. And she is the author of Be Social, Be Rich. And so today, we're going to be talking about how to be social and how to use Twitter to monetize and how to create money and actually how to make connections, one-on-one -on -one connections. So welcome, Martha. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And, you know, we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, Twitter. And we are going to address your current situation. So let's get that out of the way right now. So Martha is in the South, and her air conditioning's gone out. So you might see her waving. You might see her wiping her face. You might see her sipping some water. And you know what? It goes perfectly with her accent. And I have to say right now, I love her accent. I love her voice, and I'm just really thrilled to have her here with me. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm in an unusual situation. It's hotter than normal <laughs> in my home, but it's okay. You know what? We we just go with it. Right. I mean, I, I gave her the option of re, you know rescheduling, and you know what? Me and her are warriors, and we chose to hit the broadcast button and do this interview. So you know what? We're gonna do it. <laughs> okay. I have a law degree, but I'm not a practicing attorney. So just so just so you'll know. <laughs> Anyways, so I, I would love for you to share with people, I, I actually love the title of your book, by the way, Be Social, Be Rich. And for me, I think all of social media, and that's why, as you know, my title of my, you know, my show is Social We Media, We. And people need to get what we means in social media. So can you share with us a little bit, like your title is Be Social. What does that mean to you? Well, you know, my title is very interesting. Uh, I live what I call an inspired life. And what that means is that I really listen to that internal voice when it's uh, nudging me or uh, telling me what to do or whatever. You know, some people call it, you can call it God, universe, whatever. I, I uh, tend to call it God. But uh, one day in my meditations, I heard uh, Be Social, Be Rich. And I just knew that that was the title of my next book. So uh, the title itself was an inspired uh, title. What it means to me is um, it really, there's, it's a double meaning on the, the Be Social, Be Rich. Uh, be social, obviously, if you're social on the social media sites or if you do a lot of networking, you are definitely going to increase your bottom line for your business. But to me, the added uh, wonderfulness of it really is that you increase your your life, you've, you've in, your life becomes richer because of the people that you meet along the way and the people that you accumulate into your network. And so really there's a double meaning there on the riches. You are definitely going to increase your bottom line, but your life becomes so much richer because of, you know, the people. And so I would love to actually expand on that because I think a lot of people, I think social media and actually the internet, let's go into the internet. I think a lot of people, there's some people are like are really afraid. So, oh, there's a lot of loony bins out there, you know, there's stalkers out there and all that. And so what, what I'd like to go back to what you said is the connections and that our lives get richer. So when you say richer, and so where I would like to go with that is most people only think of the monetary. And what I would say about that, it's not just monetary. Richer is the connections. And I actually did an interview yesterday, or actually two days ago, and we talked about that, that connection, that richness of actually our soul, our mind, our spirit. And when we yeah. meet people, I mean, our hearts grow, our beings grow. I mean, it, it is that connection. And like you said, whether it be God, whether it be spiritual, whatever you want to call it. And I think that we need to get out of that mindset of, again, if we think we're going to have stalkers, if we think the Internet is bad, you know, we're going to draw more of that. I think we need to really kind of get into that intuition and what we focus on expands. So if you want to attract people that are good, if you want to attract people that are of the abundant mindset and whatever that word means to you, you're going to attract more of that. If you're going to be focused on people that are, I don't know, misers or are negative or, or whatever that is, you're going to attract more of that. So I, that's another reason why I love the title of your books. I really love the fact that you tie in, be social, and like you said, the word be rich is not just be rich as in monetary or your bottom line. However, it is enriching, and I, so that's why I'm going to, I'll say enriching your life. It's not just yeah. rich. 
It's yeah. enriching your life. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that is what, you know, people, I, I'm just a people person. So to me, social media was just such a natural fit, you know, because it was just yet another way to meet new people. Now, I know what you're saying, you know, that there's stalkers, there's crazy people. But you know what? They're everywhere. Exactly. Um, and if you're really going to use social media, you just have to be aware of it and you have to use it with integrity and like you say, like attracts like. So if you're using it in its proper manner, chances are you're not going to attract, you know, the stalkers and things. Obviously on um, all social medias, I get direct messages from, you know, goofballs wanting to, you know, tell me I have a beautiful smile, can we meet, yada, yada. <laughs> Obviously they have not read, you know, my profile that says I've been married almost 35 years and I'm happy. So, uh, you know, you just disregard those, don't answer them and just go your merry way. You mean on Facebook, the other mailbox? I just cleared out 90 messages. Oh, you have such a beautiful face. You know, I'd love to meet you. Please inbox me. And it's like, you know, we all get those. And again, it's common yeah. sense. And the other thing that I find really fascinating, especially that, and we're going to get to Twitter in a minute, especially I, wanna, I just want to address Facebook here for a minute, is what people don't get is I don't know why people don't have their pages public. And, and this is where I'm getting at, whether you're talking about the, the stalkers and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. You can still have your pages public. All it takes is a little extra work in terms of monitoring your pages. I just have someone checking the pages, and they scroll through to make sure. I mean, I allow anybody to post on my page. I allow mm -hmm. anybody to comment my page. Who cares? I mean, some people are like, well, I can only have 5,000 friends, and that means I have to use a page. The problem with the pages is the algorithm kicks everything out. The only mm -hmm. thing people see is if you only write text. If you write anything with links, it, nobody sees them. If you just do pretty pictures now, nobody sees them. So you can only write text, which is really counterintuitive. So yeah. everyone goes to your personal pages anyway. So if you just make them public, let anyone post, let anyone comment. It doesn't matter if they're a friend or not. They can still yeah. communicate with you, and you check your other mailbox. So it's like... yeah. For me, I mean, um, you know, I don't have a problem going back and forth from my, uh, you know, my profile to my business because everybody knows what I do. Exactly. So, you know, I'm going back and forth, and I feel like if my personal friends don't want to see the marketing or don't like what I do, they know where to find me, so they don't, they don't have to connect with me on Facebook. You know, if I've got high school friends, you know, trying to connect with me, I, they just need to learn what I do because I'm on there in a marketing uh, capacity really so um, you know it, it just is what it is but I use I go back and forth all the time it doesn't bother me I, I just feel like I'm smart enough to uh, handle <laughs> whatever comes my way exactly I mean I do I do use both I just find that I'm actually using my personal profile more and more because it's just easier I just get yeah. you know it just gets so convoluted but anyways let's get to Twitter because I, I really love Twitter I mean Twitter is fun it's easy it's short it's to the point <laughs> so how, how have you used Twitter to gain clients and and actually make those personal one-on-one -on -one connections you know there's so many different ways to do it um, and I use many techniques but what I like about Twitter is people are right there in the moment you know, um, if you're having a conversation on Twitter, they're not going anywhere. They're going to stay there and have the conversation, which to me is so different from all the other sites where you might post something and then come back in two hours and answer what somebody said. Twitter is really not like that. It's people in the moment. So that's what I like about it. You can jump in a conversation uh, pretty quickly and uh, insert yourself where, you know, you might be needed. Um, one of my techniques is just to jump in conversations that are going on about social media or um, you know something that in my niche something about blogging maybe and just uh, you know add to the conversation I try to add value and that way you know I tend to get noticed more I guess so you said something that's key right there you add value a lot of people don't understand how important that is nobody's gonna wanna it's like a lot of people just want to take they, they want to actually, you know, drain your brain of information. Can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? Can you help me with this? You know, who do you know who does this? Who do you know? We, it's like you need to give first. You know, the more we give, 
then it does come back. And, and the funny part is actually, you know, I'm not going to mention names here, obviously. But anyways, I there was a, a pretty big coach one day who um, we were talking about giving and actually the book The Go-Giver. And, and I was talking about the book The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. And this person was like, well, I, I don't like to give because you get taken advantage of. And I was a, I was literally really a taken back because the person who said this was actually a pretty esteemed speaker. And I'd written several books and I was like, whoa. I was like, I couldn't believe that this, this was coming out of this person's mouth. That this person had written several books who actually spoke, you know, actually said that, you know, they were afraid to give because they would be taken advantage of and that this person had a policy of telling the, the person who would ask something of, of, of this person that they would ask them ahead of time well if you want something from me then my 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 protocol is that you need to tell me ahead of time when you're going to reciprocate so if, if she was going to help them <laughs> no seriously so her referral her referral program was that if she was to refer for you she needed in advance a um, written thing that, that stated when you were going to reciprocate for that person because well, I don't want to say it's a he or she, but you understand what I'm saying. She, yeah, but I, I don't even get that. I don't even get that mindset. I mean, right, that's I get, so, that's, so, that's that's so foreign point. to me that it I is. don't even get right. it. Because, so I was so taken back. Yeah. I actually wrote back and I said, okay. I said, and I just let her go back. I let her, you know, state her mind. And I realized that I said one or two things, and I really got really clear that no matter what I said, the person wasn't going to be able to hear it. So I just said, okay, thank you for sharing. And I left it at that because I realized no matter what I said that the person wasn't going to be able to hear it. And, and the funny part was yeah. the person had a need to keep coming back and defend the point of view. So it was like, mm. whoa. But anyways, so yes, as you said, you need to add value. You need to give in, in, in order to get. And the funny part is we will naturally get anyway if we give. It's just, it just naturally <laughs> happens whether we right. whether we understand that or not it is a natural law if you will energetically even if we don't yeah. understand it now the yeah. catch though is we have to give without thinking we're gonna get I mean you, you can't give with the expectation that if I give to Martha Martha now owes me so that that's the catch if we just give yeah. naturally it'll naturally arrive back if I give to Martha going okay I gave you one now you owe me one that doesn't work that's the right. unconscious monkey mind saying, okay, now Martha owes me. It's just a naturally giving of value just because that's our nature. Right. Well, and Twitter is such a great place to give because um, on Twitter you have the opportunity to use the retweet. And when you retweet uh, what someone has said or a blog post they put out or an article, or just you know an idea that they have that's a way that you're giving automatically you know you're saying this person has written something I think is uh, noteworthy and I would, I'd like to share it uh, you know with my uh, followers also so to me just the fact that you can retweet on Twitter um, there's a real giving spirit there in, in my opinion but you know the Twitter stream is um, you know it's it's getting somewhat noisy I will say that it's uh, as time goes on, it's getting noisier, and uh, you know there are a lot of people on there that are just what I call blasting. They're just um, you know they've it's all automated. They're they're either blasting out quotes, content, whatever. But you can tell they are never there. And you know what? To me, they are missing the opportunity to pick up clients, to pick up prospects, to engage with people who might be joint venture partner partners at one point. Um, you know, they're missing opportunities to really expand their brand. Uh, so I really don't even understand. To me, that's that's someone who's just using it for advertising purposes, really, and they, they're missing so many opportunities. So you brought up something that I it is kind of a pet peeve of mine. So let's talk about that because thank you so much for bringing it up. So I do <laughs> not ever automate, and it, and it's 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 so funny because I get so many people that argue with me on this. I, to me, if you're automating, why are you even wasting breath? I'd rather hire someone. I'd rather hire a person. I literally, I hire an intern to do what I want put out there with a physical hand than to, than to automate. Because to me, then it totally what you said. It defeats the purpose of even being on Twitter. Why are you on Twitter? Like, why, why are you... Well, 
I why think are you I blasting? I need to qualify how I said it because um, I'm talking about people who are only automated. Right. Because well, that's what that's what I'm talking about. I, I, I use heard some you. automation. I use right. automation mixed in with uh, real time me being there uh, conversation. No, no, I, I heard you. I heard you. I, so that's where I'm going. I am talking about people that only automate. Okay. And, and, and I'm talking about the blasting. Because for right. me, it's really irritating to go, like, for, I'll go through my feed and I want to retweet some people's stuff. And I'm going through a feed that, for me, okay, I'm, let me clarify too. Let me, let me be a little more specific. There's two things that really annoy me. There's nothing worse than going through a feed and all I see is I gave clout to this person. I gave clout to this person. I gave clout to this person. I gave, um, you know, cred to this person. I gave, you know, that to me, and, and I know they're doing it to boost their, you know, their clout score and all these other scores to get higher numbers. If you look at my feed, it will say thank you. However, I never, I mean, in the old days, way, 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 when I first started, yes, I did do that before I knew any better. But now I yeah. never do that. I do say thank you. I always thank people for retweeting. I'll thank yeah. people for giving me clout. I'll thank yeah. people. However, if I'm looking for someone's feed so I can retweet, like you said, I want to give back. So I do want to retweet something. But if I'm having to scroll through like, you know, 20, I gave, I gave, I gave, I did this, I did that, I did this. I, there's yeah. nothing for me to retweet. There's nothing valuable for me to retweet. And yeah. then, like I, you said. I know what you're saying there, too. And and I do, I, I have it on pretty good authority that uh, giving people clout all day long is not going to increase your clout score. No, it, <laughs> so, and I, and I can know, tell I'm you like also. You, you know, we, right. Yeah, we all participated in the beginning, and I finally realized, you know, this is ridiculous. Uh, but having said that, if someone uh, gives me clout because they have benefited from maybe my blog or my tweets or whatever, I'm so much more appreciative than just someone who's just going, you know, through there. So I do usually thank the person, but I'm I'm very much aware now of, you know, clout and cred that, that just giving it in bulk is really what they're doing. Giving it in bulk is not going to change any scores. It's not, you know, it's and it's pointless. So I, yeah, I don't participate exactly. in it like that. I do give my clouts out every day to the people that are in my yeah. tribe. However, yeah. like you said, I don't sit there and go, I did this, I did that. And that's my point. And where I was going, what you were saying is the blasting, the people that are automated in Triber. I, I want to give quality content. So I retreat the people that are in my tribe because I know that their content is quality. So right. my point is, if you're going to use Twitter, make sure you're retweeting quality content. And it's the people that you know. I know people that are retweeting in Triber that have no idea what the heck they're retweeting. They're just retweeting well, yes. automatically because they want, again, they want to increase their scores. And they have no idea what they're retweeting. Absolutely yeah, not. I, I do have a, I do, you know, that's not the way I do it. I actually, you know, I participate in Triber. I have my mm -hmm. own tribe and then I'm a member of several tribes. But I will say this, and I preach this all the time. I preach it on my blog. I preach it to anybody who wants to hear it about Triber. Um, I think it is a wonderful way to share content. It's a wonderful way to find great content to share with your followers. However, read it first. Don't share anything that you haven't read. If I am retweeting something and I'm saying, you know, read this, you know, this is good, I've read it. And I just assume, which I mean, well, I don't assume, but I'm hoping that the people that I follow are doing the same thing. I just do not blindly uh, send out other people's content without reading it. And, you know, that also goes to the no like, and trust. I've gotten certain people that... Even though I read their content, it's going to be stellar every time. I really wouldn't even have to read it, but I do uh, just because, I, I don't know, for one thing, I'm an avid reader, but I, I just don't feel comfortable recommending something that I haven't read. And that's what you're doing when you're retweeting someone's blog post. You would not recommend a product that you hadn't used, I hope. Exactly. Uh, so why would you? you know, I'm same, so happy. Same you're deal. This. I'm so yeah. happy you're saying this. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, it's kind of like I'm always saying this. It's kind of like you know, I feel like a broken record. So I'm so happy that a guest is now saying this. It's like yes, 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 yay! <laughs> so, yeah, well, I mean, it drives I mean, me nuts. Everybody's got their way of doing it, and some people, um, you know, are all about the numbers and and market that that kind of way. My um, 
my way of doing things is relationship marketing and you cannot do relationship marketing by just blindly uh, you know automating everything I do automate but I I don't know how to automate a conversation and when they, <laughs> when they when they tell me how to do that then I might be automating but I haven't figured out how to how to have engagement with automation it just doesn't work well, and that's the thing. That, that's where I was going, actually. That's why I get frustrated with the people that do on me. I mean, it's like we're human beings, and 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 that's what I think. Well, technology, I think, is an amazing tool. I mean, look, we're having this conversation. I love technology for the aspects of Skype, of Google Hangouts. You know, the ability to the, the you know the texting, the phone calls, the ability that we've been able to do so much through the internet. What ha unfortunately, some of the technology has actually made us further apart. And we are, we're human beings. We crave contact. We crave connection. So, and, and so that's what I'm saying about automation. You know, we, sometimes we get too crazy with the automation. And we need to remember that we're human beings and that we do crave human contact and connection. And so that's, you know, that's why I was really, I loved what you said. I, mean, I love the fact that you're talking about real connection and, have, and not using automation to that extent and so that we yeah. do have that connection it's so important and you know another thing is I take my followers seriously if they have chosen to follow me I don't want to uh, send out junk because that's a good way to get them to unfollow me but I, I take it very seriously that people are following me because I send out good content or because I'm um, sending out new ideas better ideas you know whatever so um, you know I, I think people should take that seriously you know their followers so what are you okay you're gonna love so I would love to get your thoughts on buying fake followers <laughs> oh well I mean there's there's one answer to that never ever ever do that um, you know, you can manipulate numbers, but you cannot manipulate uh, <laughs> results. And here's the thing, if you are using Twitter or any of the social sites for your business, what you're trying to do is uh, cultivate prospects and turn them into clients, paying clients. And so what good is buying um, a bunch of numbers that won't convert for you. You know, I mean, it used to be, I think people are getting more aware that um, the numbers didn't add up for a while. You know, what's the point of having, you know, 50 gazillion followers if none of them are buying your products? You know, we are using it to grow our businesses. We're using it to make money, and there's just no point to having all those followers if they're not going to convert into some type of dollars for your business and I don't mean that to be <laughs> no I agree with you, you. Know, but I, I don't I don't get buying followers I have never have understood that so I know I absolutely agree with you actually I've gotten to the point where my my shows get over 2,000 views a week and so I got to the point where I'm now I actually uh, there's a in Vimeo you can actually what do you call it un tick the marker so people can see how many views they're getting because here's where I finally got on YouTube you know you can see how many views you get and you know there you can buy fake views now so I finally I finally decided I was going to make a different decision I didn't care that people knew or saw how many views I got and on Vimeo the, the problem with Vimeo is unless you're a Vimeo user you can't um, you can't like uh, like a what do you call it like a Vimeo, and so if you if you're a consumer and you go to my Vimeo channel, it looks really looks actually not good because looks like there's no views because or no likes because like I said, unless you're a Vimeo person, you can't like the Vimeo. If you have to register to do that, so I finally said, you know what? I don't care if people think that I only have that I have 10 or if I have 20 or if I have you know how many views I got. So I finally disabled everything. So people go there, they're just seeing the actual quality. They're actually seeing our interview. They're seeing the content. I don't care. I know how many views I'm getting because I can see the back office. I can see that it's getting over 2,000 views a week, right? And yeah. so I'm actually, I wish YouTube got away from that as well because people get caught up in their head with the numbers. And the funny part is, the funny part about it is most, and I know that for facts, I did a lot of research on it, that most of the views on YouTube are, they're finding out more and more now, like Twitter, are fake views. People oh, wow. pay to get those views. So the people that got 100,000 views, 
most of them are bought views. Mm. So I'm like, ooh, I want nothing to do with that. So that is another reason yeah. why I moved all my channels. I still have all the, a lot of the interviews also up on YouTube. However, that mm -hmm. is another reason why I actually moved everything over to Vimeo. So now I have well, I all four think, channels on Vimeo. I do think having, uh, being aware of the views is good for me. And here's why. I don't have that many videos up, but the ones I have are, um, you know, how to uh, do mm -hmm. things. And I'm driving traffic to my blog or I'm driving traffic to a product. Uh, the reason I like to know the number of views because if it's a very small number, I know that I need to market that video. So I'm really looking at it from a different point of view, you know, because they haven't been bought. Uh, I'm actually gauging, uh, you know, how many people are watching it to the traffic going to my site or going to my product. So I'm really looking at that in a different way. So I like being able to see. Uh, no, what I the numbers are, but to manipulate them doesn't make right. sense. No, no but what I was saying is I can still see the numbers. In other words, I didn't disable oh, it so that, okay. in other words, I disabled it for other people to see it. In other words, oh, because okay. I didn't want the egoic thing going, oh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm getting 2,000 views you know, a week. In other words, my mm -hmm. back office, I can see all the views. So I know, mm -hmm. for me, like you said, I need to know. So I know yeah. every single video, every single number for everything. But my point is, I didn't care that other people knew that if I was getting X amount of views, I didn't want to go right. down that trip where, right. I, again, like on YouTube, you have 100,000 views. I don't care about that. I know yeah. how many I'm getting because I need to know so that I know what, what shows are doing better than others. So I know, okay, this one needs more of this or, you know, whatever, which ones are doing better for whatever reason. So, yes, I, right. I, dis I disabled it for the public because, for me, yeah. that whole egoic thing about 100,000 views, which I know half of them are bought, I wanted nothing yeah. to do with that. And that's what I like about yeah, Vimeo. It's more professional. You know, because I speak, you know, to social media and because that's, you know, where my business comes from, I get asked that a lot. You know, how do I get more likes? How do I get more followers? And people are so relieved when I tell them that, you know, it's more important to have quality. You know, it's more important to attract your uh, target market. If you're not attracting your target market, then you've got to make a change. And your change either needs to be in your message or in your niche, maybe you're in the wrong niche, period. Uh, but you know, you use it as a gauge, but nothing more. I agree. So what, are, what would you say are three really good tips that people could use on Twitter to really, like you said, either get more likes, well, well that's for Facebook, but for Twitter. So how are, what are three really good tips people could use to get more followers on Twitter? Well, the, the trick is you want to get targeted followers, I think, you know, depending on what your niche is. My niche is social media blogging, uh, you know, I'm a business coach, so I'm looking for entrepreneurs. I'm usually, uh, you know, very interested in female entrepreneurs. So uh, one, one thing that I use a lot is I participate in tweet chats. And for any of your listeners that don't know what that is, it's usually an hour out of the day of a day of the week and they're talking about a certain topic. Uh, one of my favorites and I always give a shout out to this one is blog chat because I, I rarely miss that one. It's on Sunday nights at 8 o'clock and the reason I go to that one is because so many of the people that come to me as clients are already blogging or they're wanting to blog and so I teach a lot of bloggers. And the reason I go to that chat, it is not my chat, I don't run it, but I go there uh, to see what the new bloggers are, uh, you know, wanting to know. Uh, and what I do is I, again, add value to the conversation. Whatever the conversation is, usually I've already experienced it, I've been there, I'm struggling with it maybe, or I've got a solution for it, and I just continue to add value to the stream. Well, as I do that, uh, people are noticing that, and so I will pick up, you know, new bloggers from the blog chat. Well, those are people who are in my target market, so I will definitely, you know, the next week try to make some kind of contact with them, ask them how they enjoy the blog chat, tell them I was, you know, it was nice meeting them, ask them if there's anything I can do, uh, tell them that they can get uh, a special report from me about blogging, you know, so I'm, I'm actually extending the, um, you know, the engagement. So you find that um, some of the tweet chats are a really good tool to find new clients by adding Absolutely. value in the conversation. Yes. 
Yes, so what, absolutely. What, what would be another one? Well, uh, and one more thing about the tweet chats, uh, things come out of those, not just finding, uh, you know, more followers, but uh, people to partner with on projects. You know, as they see that you uh, know what you're talking about and you see that they know what they're talking about, sometimes it's a match made in heaven and it may turn into a joint venture opportunity. Or um, it could also turn into uh, some guest blogging. Um, in my case, uh, it turned into I've written a couple chapters in some best-selling books, and from it was just strictly from conversations that I had on Twitter. So I, you know, I think it's always a good idea. Always follow the leaders, whoever the leaders are in your niche. Follow the leaders. Try to engage in conversation with them, and follow who they follow. You know, you're trying to build um, a network that is responsive to you, and you can be responsive to them. So uh, that's really how it starts. Um, another good tip is to try to speak to or have a conversation with at least three people every day, three new people, and see where that leads. You know, just jump in there. Whatever they've said, it could just be good morning, and then you come in and say good morning from, in my case, good morning from Alabama. You know, start with the weather, just <laughs> just like you would in real life, and go from there. Um, it's just uh, you have to be focused, and you have to know why you're there. If you're over there just chit chatting away, uh, chances are that's how you're going to end your day, <laughs> chit chatting away. You have to have. Um, I call it social focus. <laughs> I love the threes. I'm, I'm all about threes. I'm all about trilogies. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I love yeah. threes. It's like it's yeah. also kind of like the pay it forward threes, the yeah. ripple effect. Um, yeah. I love trilogies, so I love that one. And yeah. uh, so let's end with one more really good tip. It could be for Twitter. It could be for social media. What would be one more really gold nut, one more golden nugget you'd love to leave the audience with? Gosh, there's so many of that are my if anyone favorite. pick anyone could be anything related <laughs> to the social media spectrum. <laughs> you know, I'm going to end with something that I really hope people take to heart, and that is be yourself. Nobody can be you, and really, everything shows up, even though you're just typing. Your personality shows up through your social media. So my very best tip is to be there, engage with people, and just be yourself. Ooh, I love that one. Yes, authenticity rules the yeah. mecca of social media. I can't I mean that I can't tell you how I love that you ended with that because it is so true. What you think does not get around does. It is a small, small world of social media. You think it is not Trust me, it is very small. It may yeah. be a big world. Social media, things, <laughs> I mean, things, you know, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah. when you do rants on your walls, people cut and paste them and they save them. And when you delete them from your wall and you think they're gone, oh, yeah. no, they're not. They're someplace yeah. and someone has them and they've leaked them somewhere. I am. Yes. I mean, and, that's what people yeah. don't get. They do rants on their walls, and then they delete them, and they think they're gone. Or they do a tweet, and they delete it, and they and it's a really bad tweet about someone, and they think it's gone. Oh no, it's not. It's like you know. So when you think you're being all sweet and all nice, and you do something like that, it's forever. So yeah, be and your I, I guess we should say <laughs> that too because um, everybody has to figure out for themselves how they're going to be. But I think it's good on the front end to go ahead and make the decision about the personality that you're going to project. If you're having a bad day, my advice to you is get off social media. You know, I mean, I, I just made it a, a, a part of who I am. You know, I never cuss on social media. I, I try not to do, you know, say negative things. I mean, I'm not Pollyanna, but at the same time, there's no point in stirring up animosity. Uh, there's exactly. enough people out there to do that, so you know I'm, I just don't want to participate. Exactly, I don't. I don't get it. It's just, if you're having a fight with your spouse, don't <laughs> post it on. I mean, like, why? Don't do yeah, it. Why? Yeah, why? Nobody like, wants to. You know, like, it's like, please. I mean, it's like I don't get it. People are like, you know, 
I don't, I, I may be going for my next surgery, but I don't sit there and go, oh, I'm in so much pain. I don't want to hear, it's like, do, do I want to hear people say, oh, I'm so sorry, Carly. It's like, no, I don't want to hear that. It's like, really? It's like, I don't get it. It's like, please, yeah. you know. So I love that you ended with that because, you know, really, be yourself, be authentic, and don't air your drama on your walls. <laughs> So anyways, it's been such a joy having you. And yes, I love your accent. And I hope your air conditioner gets fixed real soon so that you're nice and cool. So meanwhile, fan yourself. Go take a cold shower. <laughs> and um, just it's been an absolute delight having you. And as always, everybody, I love your feedback. And I love bringing you wonderful content. And I hope I'm bringing you lots of value. And for tonight, I leave you. And I will be with you again very soon. I will be sending a wonderful link for you with the embedded video and the embedded podcast, and I will be seeing you very soon. So for tonight, good night. Enjoy, everybody.